So today I got a, an elite member request and remember if you're an elite member of this channel you know I will uh, do a case uh, that you request. It won't be a week-long case like uh, my normal format is but I will research it and tell you what I think and in this case it is Amy Bradley so uh, Amy Bradley disappeared March I believe 21st 1998 off of a cruise ship I was kind of familiar with this case in a way because I remember seeing it and I remember years ago maybe watching it on Unsolved Mysteries or something and or disappeared uh, or vanished I think that's where I saw it vanished with Beth Holloway Natalie Holloway's mom but it is a crazy mystery um, it's tough missing persons in general is tough so the background of this in case for the people that don't know let me fix this camera it looks like it's pointing up a little bit uh, for you that don't know she was on a cruise ship um, near Aruba in route to let me see if I can pronounce this right probably not Curescal, Curescal. Uh, not sure how, how the pronunciation of that is, but regardless, they were on a cruise ship with her brother and mom and dad. The timeline basically is she's out at the dance club dancing with her brother, and they end up going back to their their suite. They went out on the balcony. He ended up saying goodnight to her. And I want to say that it was around 1.30. I could be wrong on that, but um, it could have been around 1. But around 5 in the morning, 5.15 to 5.30, her dad awake and awakened and saw Amy out on the, the balcony still. Now, I'm unsure whether she was sleeping or if she was awake or what she was doing out there. Um, but when he he went back to sleep, I guess, and woke up for good around 6 and she was gone. And they, they never saw her again. So they... They start looking for her immediately, and they start to panic a little bit. Um, they're getting ready to dock at this island that I can't pronounce, Kara Galsau, and she, the parents are pleading to the captain, hey, don't let people dock. You're going to have to, uh, you know, our daughter's missing. And they didn't. They, they said they searched, but in reality, they did search, but... From what I gather, they didn't search thoroughly, and they let the passengers off. They had to make a decision whether to get back onto the boat after the parents had searched it themselves as well, or stay there on the island, and they stayed on the island thinking that she got off there somehow. Uh, they contacted the FBI. The FBI got involved before the... Or when the ship went to its next location. And then they do it 
did a thorough search. The parents flew from that island back to the ship and continued their search. And the search was fruitless except for two college female students uh, were there and they approached the family and said, hey, we saw your daughter. And it was around, I believe, 6.30 in the morning. She was in an elevator with the bass player from the band that had been playing on the ship. And in fact, the brother of Amy says, you know what? She was dancing with him all night or at some points during the night. So now that's, that's it, okay? Throughout the years, there had been witnesses in, I believe, Bermuda and other places on these islands who said that they had saw Amy. Somebody actually went as far as sending them a picture of a, a prostitute um, that looked like Amy. So basically it was some sort of sex trafficking. So listen, I'm not going to be able to give an answer on this. If I did, I'm a fool. You know, I, I wouldn't have any credibility because there's just nothing to go on, really. Uh, what I would do if I was investigating this case, I would look at victimology. I need to know everything about Amy. Some of the things I did, that I do know um, help maybe point in a certain direction, such as she was a lifeguard and she was an athlete. She was a basketball player. Um, but she smoked, okay, because she, she left all of her clothing in the room, including her shoes, but she took her cigarettes. Uh, it's 98, it's getting a cell phone type of things. I want to know, did she have one? Um, I need to know her intoxication level. What also bothers me is it's 6.30 in the morning. Am I missing something there? Because, man, isn't that daylight already? I mean, sure, I partied in my day, and I've stayed up till 6.30. Um, but if she had been drinking that whole time, all night, and didn't get back to the room till 1 or something, if she continued drinking... Need to know that. Uh, I need to know her intoxication level. What happened that she left that balcony to go meet this bass player? Was it a predetermined, hey, let's get breakfast in the morning? You know, that, that would be common to me. If she didn't have a cell phone, how did he contact her? Or did she just end up venturing out of the room because she was bored and met up with him? That bass player, obviously, is a person of interest, right? I mean, he he's the last person to see her. He was given a polygraph by the FBI while at the ship. Uh, he gave the thumbs up to the father when he came out. Not sure what that's about, uh, but... From what I read, he was cleared. I would, I, and I haven't been able to research anywhere what, what cleared him. Alibi? Cameras? What? I just need to know more about that guy. I need to know what cleared him. Hopefully it wasn't just the passing of the polygraph if he passed. That don't tell me nothing. That shouldn't tell anybody nothing. Polygraphs are not reliable. It's the post-test and uh, pre-test questions that are important. So anyhow, victimology. Why'd she take her cigarettes? Why is she smoking? If she's an athlete, um, a lot of people do smoke when they drink. So was she continually drinking? Like, had she not stopped until 6.30 in the morning? 
There was a witness who said they observed the bass player give her a dark drink. We can presume that, that that's coffee. I, I need to know more about that. It's a perfect way to, you know, spite that. But, man, I don't want to jump to sex trafficking. If you drug a woman with uh, GHB or whatever, you know, you use, how do you get her off the ship without somebody noticing? All those people exiting the ship, if there's a girl that's incapacitated through drugs, it's going to stand out if somebody has to carry her. Now, she certainly could have been forced off against her will. What's the security like on a ship? Are they allowed to have weapons? Because if they could have a gun, I could see her being forced off. But short of that, I don't know. She doesn't have her shoes. I can't see her voluntarily getting off of there. And I don't think she did. So when you have missing persons, you don't have a crime scene, right? There's... What do you have to go on? It's very, very difficult. Um, but there was 3,000 people on this cruise ship. So you have 3,000 suspects. Certainly, surveillance camera is going to help deduce that suspect pool. I Again, I go back to intoxication level. You think about somebody falling off of a cruise ship. If they didn't have cell phones back then, to me, the reason I bring that up, again, is someone taking a selfie up on a railing, drunk. You could see that happening and them falling in. But if they didn't have those type of cell phones, you could eliminate that. Just It goes back to intoxication level again. I mean, you need to know that. Um the witnesses who said they saw her throughout the years. One guy said he saw this girl on the beach and he he was adamant, 100% that it was her. I have no reason to doubt his credibility. And But with that said, I will say sometimes witnesses are completely wrong. Uh, but I have no reason to doubt that. This guy seems, you know, like he really was adamant it was her. He said he was two feet from her. She had some very distinguishing tattoos. A Tasmanian devil with a basketball, I believe, on her left shoulder, a Chinese symbol on her right shoulder or right uh, leg. Um, had another one near her navel. So very distinct. And if he saw those, you know, you can't doubt that. You know what stood out to me the most in this, though, besides that mystery, is that the parents hired somebody to go to this island and find her. And they said they located her and she was being held as a sex trafficking person and a victim. And they sent pictures of Amy back to. The parents of her back said it was surveillance photos. So she's sitting on the beach. They showed pictures of her tattoos from a distance. We need $100,000 more in order to rescue her. Of course, the parents got the money and sent it to them. And it was a scam. She wasn't there. And the dude was a scam artist. I can't even express the amount of anger I have for that person. To put those parents through that. You're talking about one sick individual. And I know he got arrested. Not sure how much time he got. I hope that he's still there. And I hope his life is pretty miserable for what he did to these parents. So 
So what happened to Amy Bradley? Well, it's either an accident, it's either murder, or kidnapping. You could throw in suicide if you would like, but there was no indication, and again, victimology would tell you that, uh, there was no indication that she would commit suicide. So I think we could narrow that down. And obviously, natural death. That's not going to happen. Uh, I would want to know her drug usage, if any. You know, is it possible that she overdosed and she got thrown overboard? You have to look at that, right? Um, you know, I've done cases where people have overdosed and died and people buried them. You know, they don't always go and get help because they don't want to get in trouble themselves. But you got to imagine you're on a ship and you're surrounded by water. You know, that's the best place to get rid of a body. But I don't believe suicide. If you if she got murdered, that's a possibility right there on the ship. And again, you get rid of the body and all the evidence. Just throw it overboard. But the time of day, 6.30 in the morning, people are starting to get up, right? Have breakfast. They're getting ready to dock. That's a, a very odd time to be murdered. Now, sure, murders happen all the time, but I'm just saying for this specific case on a cruise ship, I think it's a little, I, I, I would rule that out. Now, this human trafficking is something that I have just started to really get familiar with. Um, and it's, it's a thing, you know. Don't, don't get it twisted and think that it's something that people just make up. It's very possible, if not probable, that that happened here. My only thing with that is how do they get Amy off of the ship against her will? Okay. Could be some sort of ruse. You know, we've seen that before in many cases. Ted Bundy used a ruse by putting his arm in a cast pretending he needed help before he would club them and throw them in his uh, his VW bug. There's a lot of different scenarios that you could do that ruse. I just would want to know more about the interaction with Amy and this bass player. Somebody has to know how they decided to meet up. What is the bass player's routine? Okay, he's on this cruise ship. When do they get done playing? What does he normally do after he gets done playing? Is he a womanizer? Is he sleeping with all these different girls? All that thing, all that is important and would play into what happened to Amy Bradley. Her taking her cigarettes and not anything else. I'd want to know, hey, does she smoke only when she drinks? Does she smoke in the mornings? Does she smoke when she's drink? Does she drink coffee? So if a guy offered her coffee, would she take it? Because she drinks coffee. All that shit is so important. But you don't know it. You know, you don't know it here. The family knows it, okay? Amy Bradley's friends know it. Was she promiscuous? Did that promiscuity level rise when she was drinking? Was she looking for a boyfriend? Um, so many different variables that you would have to look into. But from what I saw, from what I see, the limited amount, uh, I would say that I would... I just... An accident can happen, right? Anybody can happen upon a victim of an accident. Driving down a road, car swerves because they're swatting at a bee and hits you and you die. Accidents happen. But I want to, is there any surveillance, surveillance footage on that boat? I'm sure if there was, I guess it would have been reported. 
So if you have no surveillance footage to go by, I, I don't know. I can only ask more questions. Uh, there's just not enough there for this. But again, it I think you could you could deduce possibilities to probabilities by honing in on the victimology, what the base player's uh, background is, by talking to his family and his friends. Um, The crew members of that boat you know I would do a complete background on all of them from then and today even years later uh, very important if it was my case all 3,000 people I'd be doing backgrounds on one by one until they're all eliminated and go from there That's all I got to say about Amy Bradley. I wish I could dig in more, uh, but that's all that I have. It's the observations that I made, and there's probably nothing new here that I could bring to the table right now, but hopefully there was something in there that maybe somebody didn't do or uh, forgot to do, or maybe it's something new, and if, you know, if that helps at least keep her name out there, then I'm glad that I can do this such a mystery and I have seen that there was and I could be wrong on this number bro I, I want to say there was like 200 people that have gone missing that seems like a high number to me to go missing off cruise ships and I'm not sure what that time for your period was I'm not even sure if that's the number but uh, if that is that needs to be looked at that's way too way too many and this sex trafficking human trafficking business really needs to be looked at hard it's a shame that you can't even go and enjoy a vacation with your family and worry about being kidnapped if that is the case here and again I I don't know I can't see her getting taken against her will off of that boat and I don't see her going off of that boat on her own accord with no shoes. Did something happen on that boat? Where she was murdered and thrown overboard. But why? A lot of possibilities when you sit and think about it. Maybe she's with somebody. Maybe she did meet somebody. Maybe the bass player. Maybe somebody else. Went back to the room. They wanted to, you know, have a sexual relationship. She said no. They got angry. You know, people murder for less than that. Trust me. I've seen it. So. This might be one of those ones where we never know, but... Rest assured, I'd be looking into that bass player a little bit more in depth. I want to know the questions that he was asked by the FBI that cleared him. What was his alibi? Okay. Where did he leave her? He was saw with her. Then what? What's his, what's his answer? Does he say, hey, I, I gave her a drink? Does he deny the drink? Because if he denies the drink... That means he's trying to minimize his involvement with her. And maybe that drink was spiked. Things like that. But I have no transcripts to go by. Most of the time I have trial transcripts or something I can read. This I have nothing. So it's so very difficult. But those are the things that I would do to move this case forward. And sometimes as a detective, that's all you want to do. Have another lead so you can move the case forward for the victim the victim's family most important most important the victim's family so that's it for Amy Bradley missing uh, if anybody has any information on that there's a $25,000 reward I'm sorry $250,000 reward uh, and it's offered I believe by the FBI FBI is offering I'm reading this right now the FBI is offering a $25,000 reward 
There's a $250 reward offered by Bradley's family. So if you have any information, Google it, get it to the correct people. Um, if you want, you can certainly uh, get a hold of me at KenMains.com and send me the info and I'll get it to the right person. You know, you never know what tip is important. Always remember that. If it seems insignificant to you, it might be very significant to the investigator. Okay, so remember that. So, that's it. Mains out. Thank you.